Well, finally, we got a good episode of Monday Night Raw. I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad we got a good episode. I know some people might think, oh, you, you know, you might be hoping for a bad episode just so you could rant on it. And yeah, sometimes I like to rant on shit. But I'm truly hoping every Monday night there, there would be this good a show every, every single fucking night. Yeah, I might get a couple more views if I rant about shit. But I'm really hoping that, you know, this trend keeps up. Although it probably won't, but I'm hoping that this trend of good shows... It's not really a trend, it's just one good show, but I hope we get more good shows in the future. Even though I like to rant more, but I still hope there are more good shows. So let's get started off. We get this big promo with like 10,000 guys to start off the show. Cena's the first guy to come out. He basically gives a prep talk to the, or, um, pep talk to the chamber. That's the word I was looking for for the chamber match. He summarizes the events of the past couple weeks. He's like, oh, Orton lost to me and Brian and just basically summarizes the past two weeks. Then Cesaro comes out with Coulter. Um, Cesaro actually beat Orton. They actually put Cesaro over Orton. I was very shocked at that. I didn't watch SmackDown. I couldn't have. I was in Mexico. I, I took a vacation and down there you don't get fucking you get like 30 channels or whatever so I, I couldn't even fucking possibly watch it but um yeah I found that out Cesaro won I was happy about that then Cesaro says he will win and become new face uh the new face of the company Tina then insults him and what I don't like about this it didn't give Cesaro anything to come back you know Cena I forget what he said he's like oh you I don't, I don't fucking know that's pretty much irrelevant but the fact is he, uh, they didn't give Cesaro any time or any, you know, promo time to come back to retaliate, which I was very disappointed about. Give Cena and Cesaro at least a minute or two of back and forth on the mic, but they didn't do that, which I was upset about. Then we get Sheamus and Christian coming out, both say they will win. Then Orton comes out, has some nice insults on the chamber participants. I'll admit, Orton's been pretty good. You know, as at his promos in the past month or two, he's really picked up the pace on uh, his promos. Um, e even though WWE is pretty much ruining him, telling him to act like a fucking pussy every week and say, "Oh, I don't want to be in the matches," but he's he's had some nice promos. I, I I'll give him that. He still sucks though. So I still fucking hate Randy Orton, but he has had some nice promos. And Brian comes out to a pretty big pop. Says the crowd will be chanting yes when he wins. Um, then Kane comes out. Says he's in charge to rectify his mistakes he's made over the past. You know, in, in, in the past. Then, you know, the, the, the uh, authority, authority. I have to call him the corporation, but the authority. Supposedly, yeah, that makes sense. Why would you put somebody in charge who's made a bunch of fucking mistakes? Why would you promote somebody who's made... A bunch of mistakes over the past couple weeks. It makes no fucking sense at all to rectify his mistakes. What the fuck does that, you know? Oh, we're just gonna promote some guy in my company who, who's fucking up. What? So, um, Kane says he's in charge. He makes Cena versus Cesaro and Christian versus Brian. A pretty underwhelming segment I felt just too too much shit going on too many people there was like seven people involved in the segment there was no time to get off any legitimate promos or back and forth promos really really so um yeah just too many entrances in the promos you know they weren't you know the entrance time was probably just as much as the promo time there wasn't any time to get any legitimate promo started really so that was an underwhelming segment there then Brian defeats Christian. Um, Christian attacked Brian before the match off the Kane distraction, which I liked. Christian turning heel or some, or at least at least he's showing some signs of aggression. I took this as a heel turn though, which I'm happy about. Happy about. I didn't expect it, but I'm happy about this. I'm, you know, this is pretty cool. You know, not like the best thing that could ever happen, but it's pretty cool. Uh, the match was okay, maybe a little bit slightly above average. Not anything special, but the match was okay, maybe a little bit better than okay. Um, 
It was a cool ending though with the roll up. Daniel Bryan like jumped up on Christian's arms or whatever and did a backwards somersault or some shit like that for the roll up. I thought it was pretty cool. But I do like the new Christian. Aggressive. He was going after his uh, Bryan's shoulder or whatever. But overall this segment was good with the Christian heel turn or you know at least the more aggressive Christian. But then Kane gets on the mic and says oh I forgot to mention now it's gonna be uh, another match for you. It's Kane versus Brian. It's me versus you. So uh, then Brian defeats Kane via disqualification. It was an okay beatdown, I guess. You know, some decent moves from Kane. Um, if it was a, a pure wrestling match, it would be a decent match, a okay match. Not not even a decent match. You know, so the moves from Kane, it was a slow match, but the moves from Kane, you know, some all right power moves in, that were uh, involved in that match. But if you really wanted to hurt him, you know, which, uh, that's the impression I got. Kane wanted to hurt Brian, you know, make sure he wasn't, you know, 100% for the chamber match. Why wouldn't he get out of a chair? Why wouldn't he put him through a table? Why wouldn't he do everything he could to make sure he wouldn't make it to the chamber? He didn't fucking use any weapons or at all. He didn't put him through any tables. He didn't use any chairs. So it's very PG, this beatdown and this mentality that Kane has, this big demonic monster from hell, you know, not even using a table or chair. It doesn't make any sense. Then we get the shield backstage. They tease a uh, dissension again. It's like, come on. We've, we, this has been going on for too long now. Break him up. This dissension bullshit's been going on for like four or five months or a couple months. It's like, ugh, it's just getting tired of, tired of it. It's happening every week. Uh, it's like, it's repetitive bullshit. Just break him up. If you're going to break him up, don't drag it out, all right? You know, maybe put in a month or two of dissension, you know, tease a breakup and then do it. But this is just getting too long now, all right? I'm just getting bored of the dissension bullshit. It was a good promo though from Ambrose on the Wyatts. He says they are, the, he says the Wyatts are an illusion and they are real. He's talking about the shield is real, obviously. But then at the end, they sort of show the shield is united. So, you know, and it, I think they're showing that like in times of hard, you know, when the going gets tough, that the shield are united and they will stay together. Or, you know, that's what I got from this anyway. Then we get Fandango defeating Santino, and holy shit was this a bunch of bullshit. What I got from this is it's like fucking kindergarten. Like Saint, for Santino this is like playtime or whatever, he just waltzes right down into the ring and does whatever he wants, Act, acts like this is, you know, playtime in kindergarten or some shit like that. So, what happened during the match? Well, I wrote it down. Santino is leaning in to kiss Emma. I'm very fucking pissed off what they're doing with Emma. Um, you know, just making her a fucking sidekick of fucking Santino, fucking Morella. Another dancer. That's all we fucking need on the roster. Another fucking dancer. So Santino is, is leaning in to kiss Emma, and Emma's leaning in. Why is Emma stooping down to the, to the levels of kissing fucking Santino Morella? Holy fucking shit. Is she, are they trying to portray her as a fucking slut? Emma... Is, is gonna stoop to the level of kissing Santino. Holy fucking shit. Just a bullshit little match here with a bunch of bullshit in between. It, it fucking sucks. Oh, and, and to make matters worse, Fandango wins on a fucking suplex. Yeah, what a great ending that was. Fucking zero stars for this fucking segment. Then we get Roman Reigns defeating Mark Henry. I don't think I mentioned this in my last Raw, Raw review, but I wanted to mention this. Why is um, Henry back so fast? I think it was December 30th. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the episode he was injured. And he's back in like six weeks. It's like, don't you think a broken arm would take more than six weeks to heal? I I, I don't know. But then again, they're, we're supposed to believe Cena came back in two months from a fucking triceps tear. So, you know, these, oh, everybody's superhuman in WWE. <laughs> but, you know, I just wanted to bring that up because it just doesn't make any sense to me. A broken arm and you're back in six weeks? No, that's not how it fucking works. Um, okay, at best. Um, 
Ambrose is obviously jealous that Roman Reigns are trying to give you the impression that he is. So Henry wins or Henry loses because he gets speared by Roman Reigns and then Ambrose attacks him, attacks Henry after the match. Then the Wyatts appear on the Titan Tron. Bray Wyatt cuts a good promo, decent promo like he always does or most of the time he does. Then the Wyatts come out and they're like, oh, we're going to fight you guys, you know, we're going to get this big brawl. And then they just back off, just like they did last week. Fuck this bullshit. Can we get a promo, face-to-face -face promo or a brawl or some shit between these two teams as a build-up? No, we can't. Then we get back shaded with Goldust and uh, Goldust, Cody Rose, and Barrett. They're promoting a fucking toy for kids. It was a little bit fun, a little bit funny at times. But it was just very childish. Very fucking childish. Seems like second or third graders fighting. When Bear just comes in and knocks over the, the toy set or whatever. But they actually referenced the badass. Or the American badass Undertaker. I was very surprised at that. That they actually referenced that character. Uh, but you know. This segment was pretty childish. Swagger so defeats Kingston. A good match. That's all I'm going to say about it. It was a good match. Langston defeated Mahal, uh, um, Mahal and McIntyre. I didn't see all this match. I watched it online. and You know, it, it gives you links to, um, like, there's like 12 links. There's part one, part two, etc. And, and I think, like, one of the parts, it cut off a little bit. But I think I saw most of it. Coulter had some funny insults here. But you could see him looking at his hand. It's, it's, it's pretty stupid though, you know, it looked retarded, he's like looking on his hand, it's like he wrote the fucking lines on his hand. Like when you get this bad, when you got, you know, your people, your employees writing fucking notes on their hands, you know, it just shows how fucking scripted the show is and retarded. You know, you have this one um, video online, you can look it up, where Orton leans in, Orton and uh, Sheamus are cutting a promo, and Orton leans into Sheamus and he asks him, what's my line? Cause he forgot his lines. It's like this show is so fucking scripted nowadays. Some good moves in this match, but a lot of sloppy spots, a few sloppy spots in here too. Overall, it was just okay. Didn't, didn't really get too much out of this match. Then Langston says with this pretty PG insult, I hope I hope uh, he says this to Coulter. I hope there's diapers that are big enough for you, because you're uh. Your mouth won't be the only thing full of crap. Very, I, you know, just a little bit funny, I guess. But it was just came off as PG to me. Then we get Cena defeating Cesaro. Um, Cesaro changes his name. It's just Cesaro now. It sounds pretty retarded. Um, great match, though. This was a great match. Um, hopefully Cesaro will get a push from this. There was a couple slow spots in the beginning. But I, I still decided to call this a great match, though. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. It was a great match. We get, um, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip these few backstage segments since we're running short on time. Um, I guess I'll just summarize them quickly. Triple H, Orton, Batista, Del Rio backstage. That uh, I found these two segments pretty fucking funny. Especially the Titus O'Neil one. That was pretty fucking funny with Titus O'Neil. The Batista one was sort of a little bit funny, um, but not nearly as close as funny as the Titus O'Neil one. I was laughing my ass off at Titus O'Neil. Oh, and also, uh, Darren Young defeats fucking Sandow on SmackDown. What the fuck is that? Just retarded right there. Let me get the Wyatts defeating Matadori's. Decent match. Wyatt and Cara Matadori. Would have just fucking changed his fucking gimmick just to make it a three on three? You can't fucking do that, WWE. That's fucking stupid. One of the Usos defeats Billy Gunn. Don't know which one it was. Pouring match here. Bill, um, the, the commentary was pretty funny though. Gotta say. Orton defeats or Orton and Sheamus ends in a DQ. You got a table spot here. You know I don't know what you call a sideways slam or some shit like that. Uh, I think Orton put Sheamus through the table. I think it's called a sideways slam, and they were chaining holy shit for that. It's like really the some people in the crowd were chaining holy shit. Mediocre match here. Then the shield comes out, which doesn't really make any sense. And then all the chamber participants come out, and the wides come out, and they brawl for like 15 seconds. And it was just a stupid way to end the show. It wasn't enough. It was only like a 15 second brawl. So the show was a very good show. 
So I have to ego people.